Hi, this is Craig Stocks for Craig Stocks Arts. This is the third in a series of videos looking at how to use Photoshop and Lightroom to create uh, visualizations of pictures digitally hanging on the wall of a room to, to create a, a view like this. And in this video I wanted to walk through how I created the, the frame and the mat around these pictures. So here's the one of the finished pictures with the frame and the mat around it. And as I mentioned earlier, it's primarily relying on layer styles to create the, the colors and the shapes and the shadows and so forth. If we just kind of take a quick overview of what's here. Uh, first, let me turn off the, the layer styles. And I can just hold the control key and drag the mouse down and that turns those off. Just like you can also do that same technique with layers to turn multiple layers on and off. So that's what it looks like without the layer styles, and that's what it looks like without the background layer. So what started out was just a, about a 2,000 pixel image, about 2,000 pixels on the long edge. And first thing I did was expand the, the canvas to have room to put things around it. And then I just put a blank layer, in this case white, although the color doesn't really matter, uh, below it and that created the appearance of a mat. And then as we look at the, how the styles build, there's a, a stroke. In this case, it was a, a 100 pixel wide inner stroke that created the black border. So now it starts to look like a frame. Uh, we can give that some dimension with bevel and emboss. And then we can add an inner glow and that inner glow actually creates a bit of a shadow so that it also creates the illusion of depth. And then lastly, a color overlay changes the white to a tan color, which is a little bit more pleasing color for the mat. And then lastly, we can give that a little bit of a pattern or texture overlay. And that creates the, the frame in the mat. Although, if you look at the corners, there's really nothing going on in these corners. It's just a uh, a sharp edge with no depth to it. So for that we go back to the layer that had the picture on it and by adding a stroke, again an inner stroke, and then an inner glow and a shadow, those created this illusion of a, of a matte cut or a, a relief window to give a little bit of depth around that mat. So the end result then is is this final presentation of a picture inside a frame. So we can walk through just very briefly the settings that I used and how I created those. Uh, I guess I would say the last thing that I did was record all of that as an action, uh, which you would do by going to the Actions palette and selecting Record to create a new action. Give it a name like, in my case, 100, 100 pixel frame and then it records every step and every keystroke that you do along the way and when you're done just click the stop button just like a, a, a VCR and that will stop the recording and save it save all those steps and strokes so let's go to a blank image the first thing I did this is a, as I mentioned it's about a 2000 pixel image the first thing we need to do is expand the canvas so if we go to image canvas size and what I found worked well was expanding it about 550 pixels. So let's expand 550 pixels all around. Oop. Let me let me undo that for a minute. Actually the first thing I want to do is unlock the background layer. Now we can expand the canvas size. Again, 550 pixels. If your image is larger or smaller, then your, your expansion size may be different. And then I want to drop a layer below this so that I can put layer styles around something that's around the outside of this. So I can hold the control key and click the new layer icon. And that adds a new layer below the active layer. And I have black as a foreground color, white as a background color. If I hold the control key and press backspace, that will fill 
that layer with white. So now we have our picture on a white background and we're ready to start adding layer styles. From this point on everything else is just layer styles. Double click here on the layer itself and first let's add the stroke and we know we want a 50 pixel stroke I'm sorry a hundred pixel stroke now we can go to bevel and emboss and since we have a hundred pixel stroke we want a hundred pixel size on the bevel and emboss and we'll make this it's an inner bevel and we want a uh, inner bevel and chisel hard that gives us the hard corners and I've generally played with the uh, blending modes here uh, going to normal rather than uh, screen or multiply and I changed the color from white to a kind of a medium gray and you can you can just play with the colors a little bit and the the densities to find a combination that shows all of the corners fairly well uh, something like that so now we can see each one of the corners so th what's happening is the bevel is sitting on top of the stroke and it's the two of them that work together to create that black frame then the third thing is adding an inner glow which actually is a shadow and we'll change from screen to multiply mode or darken mode might work better and we'll just choose a a black color because we're creating a shadow something like that and we need this about 59 percent oh, I'm sorry I'm reading my notes that this was really kind of a trial and error the choke should be about 59 and that should let it peek out underneath the frame and 136 pixels and again that lets it start to peek out from under the frame if we if you make the make it larger or smaller you can again play with these settings to find just what works for, what looks best for you the last two things are the color and the pattern you can as you can see you can stop pretty much any time you're happy with the results I did a color overlay and you can just click here to find a, a color that you think works well you could use a, a blue mat or a, a tan uh, I tended to probably migrate towards this light tan uh, without too much saturation something something like that and then I did a pattern overlay and I think I think I used luminosity mode so we wouldn't change our color and one of the uh, strands uh, any of them that look good to you and you can change the scale to make it a little smaller if you don't like that one there's lots of different patterns that uh, are available and again you can play with the the opacity and the scale to find a size that seems to work well for you yeah I'm going to try multiply mode and drop the opacity a little so we just have a little bit of texture going on there so so that gives us our mat I'll zoom in a little bit and you can see there's just a little texture going on so that created the mat now to create some relief along the boundary where the mat cutout would be we'll add some layer styles to our layer where the picture resides and here the first thing we want to add is a stroke and I think I used a four pixel stroke 
So it doesn't have to be very big. And then a little bit of an inner shadow, uh, about six pixels. So it doesn't have to be very large. And then an inner glow gives us just that little bit of a shadow. Uh, again, we're using a glow to emulate a shadow. Uh, we wanted about 16 pixels. And we, this needs to be some sort of a darkener multiply blend mode since we're working with dark instead of light. So now you can see the that shadow. Again, it's not real deep. We don't need much of a shadow. Click OK. So, so there's our finished our finished picture with a frame around it. If you decide you want to change the color, for instance, you can come back to the color overlay. Just double click on that. Go into the color picker dialog and use something darker, brighter. Uh, if you want a completely different color to go with a different room, again you can you can you have all of those controls available. So that's how I put that together and again if you record that at all as a uh, as an action then after you do it once then you can do it again just by clicking the play button on the that particular action and it will automatically go through and duplicate all of those same same additions with the same settings. So that's how I put together the preview of the room with the pictures in it and the frames and the mats around the pictures. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me at craigstocksarts.com and I hope you have a good day. Thank you.